How old is the Great Sphinx of Egypt? Why have they seemingly shown up in other places across the globe? Is the true identity and story of the Sphinx lost to history? Or is it just waiting to be rediscovered? It was long rumored that there were chambers and tunnels hidden within and beneath the Great Sphinx. Yet for years the existence of these chambers were denied. However, thanks to the tireless efforts of many, we now not only know that the chambers do exist, but could we be on the verge of rediscovering the true purpose of these ancient structures and what could still be hiding within? If one examines the Sphinx closely, they will realize that the head is not only disproportionate to the rest of the body, but the body itself built up and restored from a state of severe erosion, which many now attribute to water, not only due to its enclosure, but the severe rainfall damage evident across its body, a scenario which could have only occurred many thousands of years before the ancient Egyptians, when the desert itself was a jungle. Edgar Cayce prophesied that a time capsule would be found within the Great Sphinx, an object that would progress human development into the future, a theory picked up by many pseudo-archaeologists the existence of these chambers, and indeed the evidence to suggest these sites' true age and also of past cataclysm, however, has all but been confirmed by many established and well-respected independent researchers and historians, such as Chris Dunn and John Anthony West. Regardless of the many hypotheses that the site's water erosion and possible secret chambers have produced, the reality of these sealed entrances denied for many years remains. One must ask, why would they continue to hide their existence? What could be hidden within? Why would you not simply remove what is beneath and open the area up to research? If indeed there were not something within that our civilization is destined to discover. The severe undulating erosion upon the walls of the Sphinx enclosure undoubtedly show that the Sphinx had been heavily weathered long before the Sahara became a desert. Therefore, one must suspect that it could indeed be over 9,000 years old. Not knowing exactly how much rainfall there's been in the distant past, the Sphinx could indeed be far older than this. The most notable scholarly advocates, Robert Scotch, argues that the Sphinx may be far older than 12,000 years. Robert Baval and Graham Hancock proposed that the Sphinx may have been built around 10,500 BC, during the last age of Leo. Anthony West believes everything on the Giza Plateau testifies to an advanced, secure and long-settled civilization. Therefore, he suggests that the Sphinx may have been built not during the age of Leo, but a whole processional cycle earlier, in around 36,000 BC a date he feels is more in keeping with the history of Egypt as chronicled by certain Egypt kings. Regardless of an exact date, all of these talented Egyptologists propose a date set much further back within history than currently accepted, and they have provided considerable evidence to back up such conclusions. At the time of disclosure, the argument sent shockwaves through the Egyptologist establishment, not because of the datings, Egyptologists and mainstream historians have grown quite inept at ignoring data, but more because it was realized that there is, indeed, no other explanation for their arguments. There is little doubt that the Sphinx enclosure was subject to severe erosion within its lifetime, and although it could have been explained away as a naturally formed enclosure, we fortunately know from analysis that the limestone blocks dug out from there were then used within the building of nearby Sphinx Temple. Interestingly, no other site in Egypt shows the same type or degree of erosion. Was the evidence hidden away, concealed from the public in what could only be called a conspiracy? Sediments surrounding the base of the monuments and a once existing watermark upon the stones halfway up the Great Pyramid's sides indicate just that. Two-inch thick salt incrustations once found within inner chambers Silt sediments rising to 14 feet around the bases of the pyramids found to contain seashells and fossils that have been radiocarbon dated at nearly 12,000 years old have indeed slowly vanished over the years. These sediments could only have been deposited in such great quantities by major sea flooding. 
Her watermark was also once clearly visible on the limestone casing stones of the Great Pyramid. These stones were unfortunately unknowingly removed by invading Arabs. These watermarks were halfway up the sides of the pyramid, or about 400 feet above the present level of the Nile River, 200 feet above the base. It seems the last remaining shred of evidence, the enclosure, survived due to the talented individuals that were required to spot it. Individuals who are thankfully on our side. The Great Sphinx of Egypt is the largest stone monolith statue on Earth. It took nearly 20 years to fully excavate the Great Sphinx. Since this time, the Sphinx has undergone a lot of restoration, no longer taking on the appearance of being unfinished, or to the keener eyed, severely eroded. Why alter such an important artifact? Why not preserve them in their found state? After all, we have no idea of what the builders initially intended them to look like. Just how old are these statues? Are they even older than the pyramids? I tend to suspect yes. Not only do they show evidence of millennia of rainfall, but also submersion under salt water. But the most intriguing fact about the sphinxes is their hidden openings. Openings I suspect were the reason for the quote, restoration. One of the outcomes of these modern manipulations upon the most important ancient monument on earth was the concealment of hidden passages that dot the Sphinx's design. Many initial reports of the Sphinx included details of three or four openings around the Sphinx leading to complex tunnel systems, containing tombs with alien artifacts. Something within these tunnel systems prompted the Egyptian government and even the CIA to step in and restrict access on the grounds of, quote, the nation's security. What is a Sphinx? Why choose this creature to devote such effort into creating? A strange story about the Great Pyramid of Giza appeared in the March 2000 issue of the Egyptian magazine, Rose El Youssef. According to the article in 1988, French Egyptologist Louis Caparat discovered an alien mummy within a secret room found in a crystalline transparent case. It was believed to be a hybrid, which is a mix between an extraterrestrial race and human DNA. A papyrus found near the body tells of this being's encounter with the pharaoh Khufu. According to Ancient Code's anonymous source at the Egyptian Antiquities Department, the mummy of what appears to be an alien had inscriptions upon the tomb that showed that this was being a counselor to the pharaoh and was named Osirune, meaning star or sent from heaven. The body was said to have been buried with great respect and care and was accompanied by a number of strange artifacts made of a synthetic material that is not found in any other Egyptian tomb. Also, the source claimed it's unclear what sex it was, but it had unusual reptilian type skin, no external ears and overly large almond shaped eyes. The source claimed that the discovery has caused great controversy among Egyptian officials who want to keep it hidden until a plausible explanation for the strange mummy can be made. Numerous select specialists have visited the site. Regardless of the wild claims, there are indeed tunnels beneath the Sphinx, and they have been covered up by authorities for some reason. According to author Peter Tomkin in his book Secrets of the Great Pyramid, some Arabian authors have reported that Al Mamun found a sarcophagus with a stone statue in the shape of a man. They say that within the statue lie a body wearing a breastplate of gold set with precious stones, an invaluable sword on his chest, and a carbuncle ruby on his head the size of an egg, which shone like the light of day. With many of the tunnels beneath the Sphinx being unexplored, but according to geophysical surveys, containing large unknown metal objects, it is only a matter of time before Egypt's secrets are out in the open. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. We recently covered the ongoing debate regarding the true age of the Great Sphinx and the recent controversy found in the geological evidence, which indicates that the monument, long taught to be a mere 3,000 years old, is, in reality, as much as 800,000 years. This evidence is based on erosion patterns and their shared characteristics with coastal erosion patterns. Additionally, we also covered the remarkable discovery of a possible second sphinx found a short distance away. However, what we didn't cover was the anomalies that can be discovered regarding the continued mainstream posit of the sphinx experiencing modern manipulation. 
and the possibility that the face now found upon the Sphinx was a much later, even possibly modern addition, now concealing the true identity of the Sphinx. We have touched upon the rather amateurish stone cuts that are visible around the Sphinx's headwear in the past, along with its ears and many other interesting yet largely unknown and we feel academically ignored features found all over the Sphinx's face and head. From the neck down, the Sphinx still shows its age in all its glory, not only a match to the far more eroded, now unrecognizable second monument found a short distance away. The question is if mainstream academics or those bestowed with the responsibility of protecting the Sphinx were not aware of the controversy in regard to the Sphinx's true identity all these years ago, then why did they do these works? Why did they clearly implement great efforts, and clandestine at that, if they were not aware of its fragile and seemingly hung existence? Hung off a far older relic, not only hiding its true age, but continually pushed as the authentic original appearance of this great monument. Not only is our evidence mounting in regard to the true age of the Great Pyramids, and possibly for this exact reason, the numerous additional works clearly made by later yet also advanced ancient now lost civilizations are now visible to all who visit these monuments. But it seems that the cracks are also beginning to form, thankfully only within the modern paradigms, in regard to the true identity and true age of the Sphinx as well. Who built the Great Sphinx? Who added the head we see today, one now synonymous with the plateau? Why were manipulations done to the head, clearly to preserve it, yet in complete secret? We find our research and the mounting evidence supporting our posits highly compelling. When we first explore the suppressed yet very real secret passageways littering the Sphinx base and structure, we were confronted with compelling evidence to suggest another Sphinx existed on the other side of the African continent in Zinder. Not only were there still existing remnants of this once spectacular structure, but there also remains the clearly recognizable and notoriously erosion-resistant accompanying pyramids. However, what some may find astonishing is that exactly 6,000 kilometers to the east, in a place known as Baluchistan, Pakistan, another sphinx can also be found, clearly of a similar antiquity. Supporting the suspicion claimed many times on our channel that a civilization which far preceded the ancient Egyptians actually built these amazing pyramids. Known as the Sphinx of Baluchistan, many funded academics have strongly denied the possibility of this familiar-looking formation being of man-made origin and many attempt to claim that its familiar shape, along with the surrounding environment's artificial appearance, is mere coincidental, and that the entire area is just a natural formation. These conclusions, made with no official archaeological investigations ever being undertaken at the site. Thankfully, however, an equal number of individuals who have actually visited this site, most self-funded, have actually concluded the complete opposite. Graham Hancock being but one individual who has concluded that the site is indeed a very ancient sphinx, quite possibly dating back to the last precision of Leo some 12,500 years ago. As Graham's website put it, quote, The sphinx appears to be decked up in a headdress that closely resembles the Nemus headdress of the Egyptian pharaoh. The Nemus headdress is a striped headcloth that covers the crown and the back of the head. It has two large conspicuous flaps which hang down behind the ears and in front of the shoulders. The Sphinx has horizontal groove across its forehead, which corresponds to the pharaonic headband that holds the Nemus headdress in place. One can easily make out the contours of the reclining forelegs of the Sphinx, which terminate in very well-defined paws. It is difficult to see how nature could have carved out a statue that resembles a well-known mythological animal to such an astonishingly accurate degree." End quote. We find it disappointing, yet not surprising, that many individuals within modern academia, accredited with many titles to their name and thus much educational responsibility, would defend a paradigm regardless of investigative support 
a highly unprofessional yet repeated practice across many fields. The Sphinx is perceived by nearly all concerned as a symbol of protection, a guarding force which was often erected at sacred or highly important sites. And the Sphinx of Baluchistan is no different, appearing to be guarding a temple-like structure nearby. Many have concluded that the Baluchistan Sphinx temple site actually retains clear evidence of pillars, a temple entrance, an elevated sculpted structure to the left of the entrance, along with much more interesting geology in the surrounding area. Is the Baluchistan really just a natural formation? If so, why has no official investigation been undertaken? It is clearly a very controversial archaeological site, and one we find highly compelling.